Okay, welcome everyone to the South Carolina Department of Education Office of Personalized Learning webinar. This is webinar number one. This webinar was originally recorded and took place on January 24th, 2018. This is actually a re-recording due to a couple of little technical things that we wanted to make sure were um, corrected. And so we are re-recording this webinar, um, but we will still be able to share with you some features um, of folks who were live and uh, participated in the chat feature, and we're going to make sure that we uh, weave those things into that. Here with us today, um, I have Robin Kanan and Lauren McCauley. Robin is with a, a group called Knowledge Works, and they are partnering with the South Carolina Department of Education um, as we move through finding your why and knowing the what. So thank you um, for joining us. Um, I'm Stephanie DeStazio, and as I said, Lauren McCauley is with us, and Robin is with us today. Uh, Lori is not with us on this webinar, but she was with us on the first one. So I am going to go ahead at this point and turn it over to Robin. Wonderful. Thanks, Stephanie and Lauren, and good afternoon, South Carolina. So one of the things that we did when we were recording um, our first webinar is we had uh, lots of our participants make use of the chat box. And because this webinar is not live, we're handling the chat box a different way. Lauren, do you want to talk about that for just a minute? Yes. So when we get to the features where our participants were asked to interact in the chat box, uh, Robin will share the question, and then I will share a couple of the answers for some, from some of our participants so that we can uh, Here's some of the great ideas that were shared on our live webinar. Wonderful. And we had participants from all over the state join us. And so we, in an attempt to really personalize the experience, we asked folks to let us know who they were and where they were from. And we had uh, all, all kinds of different roles, teachers and administrators, building leaders, instructional coaches, district folks, um, superintendents, building teams. And so we had a wide variety of participants, and we were really excited about that. So as we begin to talk about personalized learning, and we recognize that there are lots and lots of examples of the good work going on in South Carolina, we asked participants to really take a moment and reflect on how they would describe personalized learning, doing a little thinking before the telling, because we are knowing the what, but we're also finding our why. Yes, and so some of the great answers that we received to, to this question in our chat box were, um, I would describe personalized learning as customized to meet the needs of individual learners. Personalized learning is focused on the learner. Keywords are flexible and student-driven. It's about using data to drive decisions. Personalized learning is not one size fits all. It's meeting learners where they are and providing them with a structure and framework that's tailored to meet their needs and designing their pathways. Personalized learning is transparent, individualized. It's about choice and student mastery of goals. Student, uh, personalized learning um, fosters self-advocacy and student agency. Uh, so these were just a few examples of uh, responses from our chat box, um, and, and, and we had some, re some really great thoughts and really great examples, so we were happy that folks were sharing that with us. We sure, we sure were happy about that, and we, as we looked at those and reflected on mm -hmm. how folks describe personalized learning, we uh, appreciated the variety and the interpretation of thought, and as we go through our webinar today in the next several minutes and think about um, kind of why we really believe it's important. We'll come back to the what, but knowing that we have a, um, a real breadth of thinking around that, and we would um, definitely give a great double thumbs up to those responses. So thanks, everyone, for that. One of the things we like to do when we really begin this work is taking a lesson from one of our favorite authors out in the field, um, a gentleman by the name of Simon Sinek. And Simon Sinek offers lessons in folks that are doing innovations and transformations in um, many different avenues 
um, around the country and, and really around the world. And he has um, a, a thought that really suggests that we start with the why. And we believe that as well. In particular, when we are undertaking um, this work of personalized learning. Everyone really has a why um, of, of things that they're going to do and actions they're going to do. And oftentimes, in education in particular, since that's really what brings us all to this work, we begin with the what and the how. Tell us what it is, what is the new strategy, what is the initiative, um, what is the, uh, the, the program that we're going to implement or we need to think about, and then we immediately kind of move into understanding what that is and all the details and then how we're going to implement it and how we're going to make that part of our, of our daily fabric. Um, what, we've, what we're learning is when we want to actually sustain the good work that we're doing, we want to think about what brought us to that as a solution in the first place. And so really thinking about, um, as the green would, um, would kind of uh, um, make us think about our purpose. What is our cause? What are our core values and beliefs? What's our passion around the innovation, the transformation, the initiative, this thing called personalized learning? Why would we do it? What makes us believe that this is something we really want to undertake? And so when we are working with our learning communities in South Carolina and also um, around the country, we really encourage folks to begin to think about why they're doing what they're doing as a way to anchor their work and provide a vision that's going to help them sustain um, in the days to come and then grow that capacity towards that. We believe that there are some compelling reasons for the why. And so we'd like to offer a few of those to you today as we have you begin to reflect and think about your why. And Lauren's also going to share some of those when we get a little um, deeper into this. One of the first things that we think about as a why for personalized learning is the idea of equity and access for all students. Meeting the unique needs of each student is a powerful level, uh, lever in education, and we believe that personalized learning provides and addresses that equity that oftentimes um, is a challenge. We believe that and we know that neuroscience is exploding. Um, brain science tells us that kids develop at different rates, and if that is something we believe from the research, and we do, then we have to think about how we sometimes batch kids in mass groups, 25 students in a class, all taking the same test on the same thing at the same time. If brain science tells us that children learn at different rates, is that really a strategy that we want to carry forward? We think closing learning gaps is another compelling reason for personalized learning. Students, all students, in particular, this um, idea highlights what would traditionally be your higher performing students, um, those kids that traditionally get the A's and the B's. They have gaps in their learning, just like students who may struggle or be challenged um, throughout the school day. And personalized learning has shown us that those gaps can be closed for all learners. So if we're talking about every student, we mean every student, not just students that may have traditionally been identified in one particular subgroup. We really believe that personalized learning um, not only helps and supports students as they grow in um, academic content areas, but also as they develop skills and characteristics to be successful um, after their school experience. So in college, if that's their choice, in a career or workforce, and certainly um, as part of being a citizen. And so we're really looking at some of those foundational habits of mind, social emotional learning pieces, um, skills, characteristics, and dispositions that we want to develop in our 
um, in our young people, and personalized learning can very easily do that. The last bullet, um, and it's one that we are um, confronted with every, every single day, um, just as people going about our daily business, is the fact that the world is rapidly changing. You really can't ignore that. And so if our system of education, in fact, was really built on a post-World War II industrial model, we really need to begin to understand that that's no longer the current situation of the world, and we know that the future is likely to continue to be turbulent and certain uncertainty. And so personalized learning provides an avenue by which we can prepare all learners for that rapidly changing world. As we think about the shifts taking place, we know that they really are happening at an accelerated level. We know that information is coming at us really quickly. Um, we know that our economy, our institutions, and even structures in um, our society and daily culture are shifting at an accelerating pace. And so we want to be ready for that through this idea of personalized learning. As you look at the images on the screen, we had a lot of fun thinking about examples that we see in our daily um, experiences that really lend themselves to this idea that the world is becoming more and more customized. And as consumers, we're beginning to expect and demand that. And so as you look at some of the images on the screen, you can see how, in fact, in our daily lives, we're customizing from pulling up in the drive through to get your favorite coffee drink, um, to personalized accessories that we're wearing that tell us how many steps we're walking and how our heart is beating, to something as simple as purchasing or having um, the local cable company come out and give you a package for your, uh, your, your televisions and your, uh, your, your cable TVs that is customized and personalized for what your needs are, your budget, your interests, your concerns, um, your, uh, your wants and needs. Uh, we had a, a lot of fun thinking about, in the lower right-hand screen, um, customization around personal passions, this one in particular being a soccer ball. Steph, can you talk a little bit about that? Mm -hmm. Sure can. Yeah, so, um, like, like Robin said, our, our, we're able to really decide um, what we want coming into our lives and how we want to receive it. Um, and so, yeah, when you begin to think about passions and, and how you develop those passions, um, what we know is today's kids have some things at their fingertips that we didn't have. And this, this soccer ball is a great example. So it uses uh, kind of the little code that you see on the ball, ball there. It links up uh, with an app on your phone it sends you, you put in specific goals that you want to be able to reach or things that you want to do. It creates training plans. You, you actually set your phone up and it, um, through visual software, which I obviously do not fully understand, uh, it gives you real-time feedback on how you're doing. It uh, gives you specific next steps on, on things to work on, so it breaks that down. And then, you know, should you want to do that, let's say you're playing on a soccer team, you can take that information and, and take that to your coach and, and build on things that you're doing within your team and or just use it on your own for, for just something that you're, you're wanting to develop um, specific skills uh, and, and, and be able to enhance those. And so it's just, it's amazing all of the different ways that our lives are customized and personalized that we almost take for granted at this point. Um, but, but definitely that's, that's the world we live in. That is the world we live in. And and whether we recognize it or not, when I get coupons um, from my local grocer and I think, wow, how did they know what I was buying? Well, it's because my keychain looks like the keychain that you see up there with all my um, frequent shopper cards who are tracking data, but also using it to enhance my shopping experience and give me what I need. So my, the dog food that I buy and the brand that I buy, I'm getting a coupon for that in the mail. And so lots of fun to think about ways in which the world is becoming more and more customized and personalized so that individuals make those 
contributions um, as, as they move through the world. What we'd like to ask and what we did ask was in the chat box for folks to respond how they see customization and personalization in the world. Lauren, do we have thoughts from our chat box about what folks have to say about that? Yeah, we sure did. So uh, folks chimed in with um, some things that we're very familiar with like Fitbit, um, Weight Watchers, our, our banking is often personalized. Um, in school life, we look at um, RTI and differentiation. Um, at, you know, as we, we look at the, the television realm, a number of people mentioned Sling TV. Um, they also mentioned Amazon and Netflix recommendations, which perhaps <laughs> are what we're all um, most familiar with. Uh, right. YouTube, YouTube offers personalized recommendations based on what you frequently search, um, as well as uh, Nook um, and Kindle recommendations. And I would add to that that I often find that it's hard to turn on uh, the radio and listen to, to commercials without hearing an, an, an ad for personalized dentistry or doctors or personalized summer camp or food delivery programs. So certainly uh, the, the term and the personalization in our life is everywhere. Is everywhere. Another thing that we are learning and seeing in terms of future trends and patterns is this idea that structures and roles are becoming more and more diversified. And we really take a closer look at that and unpack that and think about, well, what does that mean, you know, in, in schools? I think you can see a couple of the examples on your screen and can easily recognize the classroom picture where the teacher has set up multiple areas of learning in the environment, in the classroom space, where children are moving through the content, learning whether it's uh, their literacy block or its mathematics instruction um, at their own rate and pace, um, how not every student in the classroom is doing the same thing at the same time, and that those computer programs the kids are working on or perhaps the lesson in the back table with the teacher have been designed based on data programs that the, that the teacher may be using, some formative assessments, so that kids are receiving instructions in real time uh, where they where they're at and helping them be more successful in their learning experiences that are in fact becoming personalized for them and so the whole structure of the classroom has been has been changed um, the idea that in schools um, in districts in kind of the old way or traditional way of doing it a lot of that thinking was top down and what we're seeing more and more today is really a diversified model where there's distributive leadership, where there's site-based management, if you will, and where schools are deciding and determining, districts are deciding and determining how they're gonna implement, what they're gonna implement, and it's uh, a really organic in that space. Stephanie and Lauren, anything else you'd like to add about that? No, I think we're good. Yeah. Great. So one of the things we did as an, as an organizer in our chat box was we really asked some questions, um, and you'll, you'll see these on the screen. Um, based on what we've heard so far about our compelling reasons, this idea that the why is really important to determine up front, and then some things that we're recognizing as part of future trends and patterns, we asked our participants really what excited them about what they've heard so far. Lauren? Sure, so one of our uh, most frequent and most popular responses to this question was, um, what excites you about personalized learning? The potential to meet the needs of all students. Um, in personalized learning, all children have the opportunity to be successful. Our participants also responded that they see room to innovate in personalized learning. It's exciting and teachers are excited and students are excited about the innovation and the flexibility. Um, we've heard folks say, it's how I've always wanted to teach, and, and now I have the, the freedom to do that. Um, folks also mentioned equitable learning experiences for students. Uh, and then uh, another participant mentioned um, the teachers are using their learning management system to create personal modules for students based on, based on assessment. So 
just a few great examples of what excites folks about personalized learning. I love that. And I loved how those comments reflected not only what, what we know is, is, is fantastic for our students, but the job satisfaction for our teachers. Teachers are excited and re-energized to think about, I've waited for this, and this is really the way I've always wanted to teach. So I love that. Another question we asked is what they perhaps find challenging, maybe a little daunting, uh, as they think about all these changes that are happening and these compelling reasons. Lauren? Right. So we know that we, we, we shared a number of um, the examples of what, what excites us, but we know that this isn't an easy process. And so folks shared some of their challenges, which include communication to all stakeholders about the shift and the, the paradigm shift that's required um, in personalized learning and the implications of change. Um, how do we go about sifting, shifting the system of support for personalized learning? How do we get and provide consistent training, professional development for our educators and, and our whole staff in our building? Um, change is always challenging and getting all staff on board to change the way they think is even more uh, challenging. Um, meeting the needs of all students in a large group um, could, could prove to be challenging for some folks. Um, and then how um, questions about how we accommodate the needs of all, all the learners um, tended to be a, a consistent um, question and challenge identified. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. So folks thinking about um, implications for their own practice, for their own learning communities, for their own districts, what it means to do a, um, a systems shift. Uh, what it might look like in a classroom, um, what we know about our, our system of education, things that are currently perhaps at play in our district and how we could shift those, um, shift in culture, shifting people's thinking as to what it could be um, potentially. Lots and lots of ideas around that. And we ended up um, this particular reflection section really with, with folks thinking about what implications for the work was. And you heard a little bit of that. Um, in some of the former comments, Lauren, anything else that was um, of significance here that folks had to say? Yeah, a couple examples. So one thing that we spend a lot of time thinking about here at the State Department um, in terms of the, the shift required in personalization is how we think differently about state accountability and testing and evaluation. Uh, that's, we, we spend a lot of time talking with our colleagues here um, about, about those pieces. Um, a few other implications folks mentioned, um, getting students and teachers to take risks and think outside the box. Um, how do we provide the support to, to help them do that? Um, and then building leaders and teachers needing to feel safe to take risks and explore strategies and techniques and resources that help move them beyond the traditional model. So definitely some really good, good thoughts here about what excites folks, what they find challenging, and the implications for the work. So we're very excited to see the, the deep thinking and the, the, the responses that we received. Very good. Uh, and we, we also have those same excitement challenges and thinking about those implications as we um, uh, really carry through with systems of support for folks trying to do this, this great work. One of the things that we wanted to do was to give you a couple of um, examples of what it looks like um, oftentimes folks that are visual learners, um, one of the questions we see is, oh, okay, I'm, I'm in, I understand, I feel good about this, I, I, I'm building my why, um, what does it look like out there? And so we wanted to bring to you a couple, of, a couple of perspectives from some of our districts that we're currently working with, both in South Carolina and then outside the state as well, to again, just give you some ideas of how other learning communities are approaching this work. Marysville, Ohio is um, in the Columbus, Ohio region, central Ohio, and they are doing a district shift from some traditional ways of teaching and learning into the personalized learning space. And so you can see on the screen when they were putting their vision together and thinking about their why, they really began to examine some of their data and they typically give every year the Gallup organization's um, HOPE survey. And their HOPE data would indicate that while they're doing a, a solid job for 
all kids in the district, and it is a wonderful place to live and to raise your kids and to go to school. Their data suggested, and they realized that that wasn't necessarily the case for every student. And so they really felt that they were missing the mark with too many kids, and, and missing the mark with one child was ex uh, unacceptable. So in their effort to put kids first and really to align to their vision, they began to think about how personalized learning, in fact, could help them do that and do a better job for that. So for them, it was really using their data to determine they weren't meeting the needs of all of their learners, and that's what they wanted to do. That was their why. Uh, another district, Regional School Unit 2 up in Maine, um, it's in the Augusta area of Maine, to give you a geographical point, um, has a vision and a mission and a strategy that they've identified as their why of personalized learning. And they believe their purpose under the leadership of Superintendent Bill Zima and the um, communities that come together to form RSU2 is that they really want to cultivate hope in all learners. They go on to define hope as the belief that the future will be better than the present and that each individual has the power to, in fact, make it so but realizing there'll be many paths to the goal and none of those are free of obstacles. They use the work of Shane Lopez to really feature that. And they believe that personalized learning was going to be the vehicle by which their why could be realized. Right here in South Carolina, uh, we also have uh, learning communities that are articulating their why. Lauren is gonna tell you about Red Bank Elementary School. Sure, so Red Bank Elementary is right here in South Carolina. It's in Lexington One, and they're one of the leading schools in the state um, in, in terms of leading the work around personalized learning. And their vision certainly reflects that. It's lead, learn, love. And I especially, I, I love all of it, but really the, the leading uh, part, uh, leading is from within. We lead ourselves in such a way that we are leaders of our learning and we are an example to others. Uh, and they live out this vision every day. And if, if and when you have the opportunity to visit their school, you will, you will see their devotion um, to this vision and, and to personalization. Uh, so they're, they're a great resource right here in South Carolina. I, I love that. And I love that we have, you know, your, your friends and neighbors in South Carolina are really considering the why of this work as they move into the space of personalized learning. Your why may also include uh, a guiding document that is statewide, and that is your profile of the South Carolina graduate. And as you examine this document, as um, many learning communities are, we really are thinking about how personalized learning helps the profile of the South Carolina graduate become operationalized. And so you've got world-class knowledge, you've got those which includes the academic um, side of the house, if you will, that we know is critical for our students to be successful um, after graduation and in, in um, college career in the workforce. We also understand that there are world-class skills, and those were some of those um, characteristics and dispositions that we were talking about earlier, the creativity and the innovation, that critical thinking and problem solving, knowing how to learn. And then, of course, those career and life characteristics that we believe are um, so important for our young people to really have developed. And so as we look at the profile of the South Carolina graduate, we believe that it clearly helps make the case for the why of personalized learning. Again, we wanted to hand it over to our audience, and so we asked the question what they would consider in determining the why. We knew that in a webinar, the structure is not expecting anyone to really come up with it at that moment in time. But what are some things that you would consider, um, whether you're from the perspective of a classroom teacher, you're a building leader, um, you're more at the district level uh, in support? And so we had folks respond to this in the chat box. Yes, so we again received some great responses to this question. Um, a, a number of folks mentioned the need to consider the unique needs of their students and the unique needs of their community in considering their why. Uh, they talked a lot about college and career readiness and how we prepare students for a 21st and 22nd century 
um, education. Um, folks talked about how we support our struggling students, but also how we're advancing our um, our advanced students as well and, and not holding them back. So these were some excellent considerations. That's wonderful. And they'll use those as they really begin to think about and perhaps their, uh, what Simon Sinek again would say, your core values and beliefs, your core purpose and determine and, and what you determine you're going to implement. So we, we really appreciated those responses. As we gave folks some food for thought around identifying their why, we wanted to circle back to the what of personalized learning. And one of the first things we had asked folks to do and Lauren had shared was reflecting on how they would describe personalized learning and what it may um, all involve. And so we revisited that. And as we revisited that, we then wanted to have participants understand that there are organizations, um, certainly the um, uh, Department of Education at South Carolina, certainly Knowledge Works that is here represented on your webinar today, but also other organizations in the field who are spending some time really talking about the what of personalized learning. One of those organizations is an organization called INACL that you may be familiar with. And that is an acronym for um, the um, International Association for Online Learning that has done a lot of shifting into this space of personalized learning. And they are a thought leader in the field, and they would offer from all of their experiences uh, around uh, both the, the country nationally and internationally some characteristics or descriptors of elements of personalized learning. And so we invited folks to really take a look at what's there on the screen and to ask themselves, do they see any of those practices um, or elements that they currently are doing as part of their daily work um, in teaching and learning? From student agency, um, differentiated instruction that Lauren had mentioned before in the chat box, um, the deeper learning and problem solving that certainly reflects what the profile of the South Carolina graduates um, was, was articulating, those, that standards-based world-class knowledge and skills, the idea that learning is anytime, anywhere, and uh, uh, can be credentialed by classroom teachers uh, if children are able to learn and provide evidence of learning with experiences they have outside of the classroom, flexible pacing, and so really uh, not an all-inclusive, but certainly some major themes around elements. Right, Robin, I would say too, it was really important um, in the first webinar we talked about, even um, if, you, if you're in a school and your learning community may not have been referring to things as personalized learning, I cannot think of a school I have been in in South Carolina that is not doing uh, some of these things on this list. We are all yeah. engaging around this work. And so the next step really becomes thinking about how do these things work together um, and what are, what are my next steps um, and, and where, where am I on this landscape? Right. I, I think that's really important to understand that this isn't the next thing or one more thing, but in fact, some of these practices that we know are absolutely best practice exemplar strategies for teaching and learning fall under this idea of personalized learning. And you're, you're absolutely, um, I, I would agree 100%, Stephanie, I'm not in schools, rarely am I in a school where I don't see these things. These are happening. So that, I think that's really good news for us. Um, KnowledgeWorks, uh, the organization has a perspective. And again, those elements, are, are here and we would say yes and we built just a little more context around um, the idea that personalized learning puts the focus on those individual um, learners and in such a way that would include this idea that instructions aligned to those college career ready standards that we're using in our curriculum. Um, it's aligned to those social emotional needs uh, that social-emotional learning that we know is so critical to the development of a whole child. 
uh, believe that instruction is customized for, for each student. And what that looks like then is the, is the work in, uh, when we get to the place of how this rolls out in the daily, um, the day-to-day -day teaching and learning experiences of our, in our schools, in our classrooms, in our districts. Um, that idea that the pace of instruction is varied. Some children may, may learn things quicker and are able to provide evidence of learning quicker. Some learners may take a little more time and can we adjust that in real time to meet those individual needs. The importance of formative assessment and that cycle of feedback and continuous improvement that teachers who are doing RTI, teachers that are using differentiation as a strategy, know um, in their in their day-to-day -day work that the um, robust supports are provided for every single student within um, the classroom. And then lastly, as, as one of our perspectives, believing that we really should have a system of transparency so that it's just not the teacher who understands what kids should know and be able to do. The students understand um, from the five-year-olds in kindergarten all the way up to our, to our teenagers in high school, what that means, what the expectation is, and that is articulated so that not only the teachers and learners, students understand that, but that also it's, it's um, accessible with our, to our families, um, our community, and so that we all have a clear understanding in our learning community of what um, success and um, advancement looks like. Anything, Lauren or Steph, you want to add to that? No, I think I think you did a nice job. <laughs> I'll take that feedback. <laughs> uh, what's really been exciting to see is that South Carolina has also spent time in the Office of Personalized Learning developing a framework um, that we're currently using. Lauren, you want to talk about this a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So when we began our journey um, at the South Carolina Department of Education with personalized learning, we knew one of the first things we needed to do was to identify what we meant when we said personalized learning. There's a number of definitions and ideas out there about um, exactly what personalized learning is. And so we spent a lot of time um, researching models across the country, be it district models, uh, state models, models from INACOL and KnowledgeWorks and other organizations like Redesign and Great Schools Partnership. Um, the, the Gates and the Dell Foundation have, um, have frameworks. And so we, we took the, the best of all of those and we created the South Carolina Personalized Learning Framework. Um, and over the course of our next few webinars, we're going to delve deeper into these components. So I won't spend a lot of time explaining each component, um, but just, just to highlight them very quickly. Um, we know in South Carolina that the heart of all of our work is the profile of the South Carolina graduate. So you, you see that right there at the middle of our pinwheel. Um, and then all of our research and what we know about personalized learning tells us that, that student ownership is what really sets it apart from all other models. Uh, and so it really touches on, on all components of personalized learning. And so that's why you see it throughout uh, the pinwheel here. And then other key components of personalization are learner profiles, learner pathways, and flexible learning environments. And we really look forward to, to digging deeper into those components uh, in future webinars. Um, but I will also add that as we look at this framework, we really um, think about this as uh, key components, but not about, not, not trying to prescribe one way for how schools and districts should personalize learning, because we have folks approaching this from from many different um, approaches, many different different starting places. Um, and, and so we, we want to practice what we preach and allow a personalized approach to this work as well. Um, and on this slide, you can see we have a one pager on our website. Uh, you can go to the website there um, at the bottom of the screen um, and you can, you can download this one pager to get a little more information on each of these components. Wonderful. One of the chat box questions following that content then was to ask folks, really, it's all about, it's all about me, it's all about you. What are you currently doing that aligns, that supports, that connects with personalized learning? And so we had some responses uh, from folks. Yeah, these were, uh, these were exciting and fun to read. And so 
folks shared with us um, that they have students that are setting their own goals based on data. So a really great um, opportunity for student ownership. Um, they're developing model classrooms in schools for other teachers um, to learn and grow um, from, from the examples that they can see visiting a classroom. Uh, some schools are offering expanded course offerings through virtual SD uh, and other virtual programs. Um, some schools are doing book studies to dig deeper into uh, various components of personalized learning. Um, in some classes, students are moving at different paces. Um, the one example that we got here was in an AP Human Geography class. So, um, you know, this different paces can work whether you're in a remedial course or in an AP class. Um, it, uh, another participant talked about um, giving freedom in terms of um, how students present their work and create a product in order to show their learning. Um, another uh, participant mentioned pockets of students leading um, student-led conferences with parents and teachers. Um, another example of uh, goal setting. Um, and then some other folks mentioned unpacking standards with students so that, so that the learning targets were transparent and easily understood by students, um, as well as using rubrics for self-assessment and tracking student learning over time. Uh, so a lot of good examples of uh, those key components of personalization. And as Stephanie mentioned earlier, um, there, are, there are personalized practices going on in every school across the state. And it's exciting to, to actually put a name to some of those strategies that are being used. That's very exciting and certainly makes the case that there's no one way to do this and there's no one, no one place to really start. So um, kudos. To, to those folks, and uh, that is very, very exciting. Also exciting, Stephanie? Yes, yeah, so um, we have created a hashtag called Personalized SC because, like I said, we know that these things are happening across our state, um, and we at the Department of Education want to be able to celebrate that. We want to be able to tell these stories and share these stories. We also want to put the power back into the hands of the teachers at the school level. And so how do we connect teachers across our state? And, and we just felt like Personalized SC as a hashtag is, is one way to do that. Um, by, by searching for that hashtag on Twitter, for example, you can begin to find others who are on this journey as well um, and, and begin to make those connections across. Um, we are excited to have a tiered network of support that we are um, participating in with schools and districts, and so that's another way to make those connections. But that personalized SC hashtag is a great way to find other teachers and get good ideas. I will tell you, I'm going to give a quick shout out. This was not in the original webinar, uh, but just two days ago, this was one that has really stuck with me. So I go online frequently and I look at the personalized SC um, hashtag and we're going to be pulling stories out of here, contacting people for some upcoming blog posts and, and uh, podcasts that we have coming out. But there was one uh, that kind of stood out to me. It was from Lexington School District 3 and it was a teacher and, and the quote is, when I first started hearing about personalized learning, I thought it meant having to make 30 different lesson plans. Now that I've learned more, I realize it's about I can start by just setting up my tasks and resources differently to allow my kids to customize things and make their own learning personal. So just little shifts here and there beginning to find your way um, and, and reaching out to other teachers. She, this person was, happening, that was tagging others. Uh, and then you can begin to see some of the conversations happening across the state. So that's really exciting for us to be able to not feel like anyone is doing this on their own. No one grade level anywhere, no one school anywhere, no one district is alone. So we, we can make those connections and, and all uh, grow and learn and really help our kids across this entire state reach their fullest potential and graduate uh, and able to achieve that profile of a South Carolina graduate, which is what we want for each and every one of them. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And so you mentioned that tiered statewide system of support. Talk a little more about that. Yes. So schools and districts, we are inviting you to um, engage with us. We have um, a different 
level of tiers. The first tier, which is exploration, this webinar is actually a, a portion of that. So just beginning to learn about personalized learning, beginning to make those connections. Uh, we will do some things to just give you access to information, to resources to help you begin thinking about your practice. Uh, schools that want to really begin launching this, planning for how are we making sure that this is not just happening in pockets or in individual classrooms? How are we re really beginning to make sure that our school is uh, thinking about all of the changes that might need to happen school-wide to support this, but at the same time giving teachers the support and the resources that they need to make these shifts? And so getting to kind of what you talked about, Robin, that how. And the third level of advanced implementation, these are schools and, and in some cases districts who have been engaged in this work for a little while now, and they are really beginning to think um, about those next steps of moving towards competency-based education and, and really beginning to think of full systems level changes to make sure that, that this work is, is happening. One thing not listed on our slide, we also have a uh, instructional coaching network. And so we are getting together instructional coaches from across the state um, at both the school level and the district level. Anyone who supports teachers and works with teachers, we want to provide those folks with some resources and some professional learning uh, to support their practice as well. That's, that's terrific. So as we shared some of the strategies that are taking place in South Carolina and how folks are beginning to grow their practice and um, extend their thinking, we have set up a series of four webinars um, for, for folks that are exploring this, and this being the first one. One of the questions that we ask kind of as a concluding piece here was that what folks would like to learn more about in the next webinar, and we certainly um, have some ideas, and as Lauren said, we're going to go deeper into the um, profile, uh, the state um, framework, South Carolina, um, not the profile, excuse me, the state uh, framework for personalized learning. But also we asked some folks what they would um, perhaps care to learn more about. Lauren, what did they have to say about that? Right, so a very popular answer was wanting to hear from schools and educators that have started the journey um, of personalization. As we've said time and again, everyone has um, is, is doing something, but I think folks are wanting to hear from those schools that have uh, said we are moving forward with the full system of personalization. Um, and so that, that was a very popular response, and, and um, we're certainly um, looking forward to providing that opportunity to folks on future webinars. Um, folks mentioned wanting to learn more about the, the personalized learning framework in South Carolina, which we'll certainly dig into. Uh, and then another popular response was tools. Folks want planning tools around personalized learning, how-to tools. Uh, and so we'll certainly uh, try to provide that through the, through the webinar, but also through um, other, other communication avenues. Um, we have a personalized learning newsletter that we send out. Um, we have a blog where um, looking to start a podcast, so we'll have a number of avenues for, for sharing some of those resources with folks. That's, that's very exciting, and we certainly can deliver on, on um, many of those requests, so that's all good um, as we really help folks understand and um, inform their own practice. So again, um, kind of knowing your, knowing your why and understanding the what, we look forward to the um, continued conversation and the journey that we are having as being partners um, together in this work. And we um, are leaving you with some contact, in contact information. Um, so you certainly have access to resources that are out there and um, in particular, some of those that were shared today. Lauren and Stephanie, I'd like to kind of turn it over to you to close us out. Well, we certainly appreciate this partnership with KnowledgeWorks. Um, it has been very helpful uh, to, to have some um, access to national thought partners um, and, and realize that, South, like I said, no school, no classroom, no, no district is doing this on their own, no state is doing this on their own either. So it's, it's wonderful to, to be able to collaborate um, across the, the country to, to make sure that South Carolina is um, on the forefront of this, of this movement of personalizing learning. And so, 
Uh, we do uh, encourage anyone who has any additional questions to please reach out to us. We are more than happy to respond um, and want to make sure that we, ha we are offering you what it is that you need. So if there is something that you need that we're not offering, we encourage you to reach out and get in touch with us so we can begin to think with you. I will say too, um, we really enjoy, Lauren and I both, really enjoy the opportunity to get out into our schools across the state of South Carolina. So if your district wants some more information, we are more than happy to come um, to you and, and have that conversation. So please do not hesitate to reach out. Lauren, anything else? No, just thank you to everyone who participated on our live webinar and all of you who listened to this webinar. And we look forward to, to seeing you in person and, and collaborating with you online. That's wonderful. I will leave you with the um, date that our next live webinar will be next week, Thursday, February 22nd. And you can look for uh, the information coming out of um, uh, Lauren and Stephanie's office to provide you with the, um, with the links. And if you care to join us live, we will be um, waiting for you uh, next week, February 22nd. In the meantime, uh, we wish you all well, and we thank you so much for your good work and the time this afternoon.